Hello everybody, welcome to my first chance to play one of the games that's been getting a lot of play on YouTube lately. And so I thought I'd take the dive, particularly since it was free to do so. And that is Season Ticket Baseball. The 1975 playoff teams and the 1986 playoff teams, as well as the rules, are all free to download in PDF uh, to give the game a try before you have to spend any of your hard-earned money to see if the game is for you. Normally, before I put a game on video, I've played a practice game or at least something, but I'm going in this cold turkey. I mean, I did watch some other people play. Um, I've seen I.D. Jester play. I've seen Steve Tower play. I've seen uh, Kurt Berglund play, and I've seen um, Dave Gardner play. Uh, just the, the ones that come to mind off the top of my head are the videos I've seen. There may be others, but those are the ones that I watched primarily. And uh, to get the gist of the game and see how it flows, and it seems like it's a fairly intuitive game to, and not too hard to get into in a learning curve. So I thought I'd come at this as a brand new person. So if anybody that is has not played the game before and you see somebody else playing it that knows all the rules you can get a little intimidated and say i can't learn this but we're going to go at it as a newbie and uh, see how it goes i do have the quick start guide uh, printed out front and back in case i need it for anything to kind of refresh my memories of course the dice we're using we're using one d6 which should be red and then two percentile die or dice of zero to to nine and they should be blue and white or white and blue and the dice are always deciphered in red white and blue order so in this case that would be a 492 so just or like 437 as it says on here all right of course the, the game i decided to play is game one of the 1975 world series starting pitchers don gullet and louis tiant uh, id jester in one of his videos uh, said he was a little bit, I don't know if frustrated was the right word for it or not, but uh, he said it slowed down the flow of the game to have to keep looking up defensive checks. So he came up with a system of uh, team defensive sheets, which he did for his 2001 Oakland, I'm sorry, 2001 Seattle Mariners replay. So I emailed him and he was kind enough to send me his template, which I edited for my use on this. So this is the defensive chart for the Red Sox and their ratings and this is the one for the red so when defensive checks comes up i don't have to fumble through the cards i've got them right here all ready to go you also have a stadium card so i printed off the fenway park stadium card um i will go ahead and we're not gonna do rain because it wasn't rainy uh in this game one of the series uh it was overcast i think but i don't think it was rainy but we will do the temperature to see if that affects the deep drives so the base temperature in October at night is 41 degrees. We're going to roll these dice and to get the new temperature, you take this 41 degree base temperature, add it to the numbers on the white, blue, and red die and see what we get for a temperature. All right, so we get a six, a two, and a one. So that's a total of nine. So that's going to be 50 degrees. Well, that's going to mean we got uh, cool weather. So according to the deep drive chart, we're going to be minus one. Minus one on deep drives now because we are at that less than 50 to 3 degree mark, the 41 plus the 9. So the all deep drives will be subtracted by one. So I have to keep an eye on that. All right, I do have the rule book out for my secondary defense because I had a question about that where a player such as Pete Rose, per se, he's listed at two defensive positions, but the only one on his card is his primary if we have to go to a lefty, if we have to send him to left field for some re some reason, then we wouldn't use this. We would use the, the rule book page, and I have that printed out, and we'll pull that in if, if need be. But anyway, that's what I've got. And I'm hoping my inside pitch setup will suffice for this. Uh, let's see. People that are familiar with the World Series, one of the most popular World Series of all time, I think, was 1975. So the lineup is Rose, Morgan, Bench, Perez, Foster, Concepcion, Griffey, Geronimo, and Gullet for the Reds. Evans, Doyle, Yastrzemski in left. And that's where I'm going to have to go to his secondary because he played most of the year at first base because Jim Rice was in left. But with Rice being hurt, they moved Yastrzemski to left. 
and Cecil Cooper was at first base. Now, there was at least one game where they used Beniquez in left and put and put Yastrzemski at first, but in this game, he is out in left field. Well, that didn't come across very good, did it? He's not really out in left field. He was playing left field, but he's certainly not out in left field. All right. These cards are actually, you know, rather large. Um, let me see if I can get an inside pitch card to kind of give you a comparison. So let's pull an inside pitch card out and compare the sizes of the cards. Let's get a pitcher card out here. All right, let's get Joe Necro of the 76 Astros out and we'll put him on top of Don Gullett. And as you can see right there, that's quite a big difference. So these cards fit perfectly on this board. This, these are a little larger, but it's not good. You know, hopefully it won't be too bad. When the pitcher's not pitching, I'll put them up here. And the starting pitcher, Louis Tiant, will go right in the middle. Right in the hot seat, as they say. Facing the big red machine. And we'll get this game going, and hopefully I won't screw this up. I am recording this, so if I do get stuck on any, any lengthy play, rather than have the video be a bunch of dead air, of course, some people might think, my videos are dead air already, but so there's no silence or whatever. I will pause the video and look something up if I need a rules check for some reason. All right. So I believe everything is ready to go. I thought I did a, let me do one more check to make sure. It looks like it's, everything is going to fit okay. And leading off for the Reds will be Pete Rose. And this is my maiden voyage into this game. Uh, after the game is over, I will give you my thoughts on the game. I'm not going to make any comments about the gameplay while I'm playing. I'm just going to play it. If anything comes up that I think is questionable or whatever, I'm not going to make a comment about it. I'll just keep playing. And then I'll give you um, my take on it after the game is over. So leading off is Mr. Pete Rose. And again, just for a refresher, for anybody that hasn't seen the game before, the red die is going to tell you where we go on each of the cards. A 1 and a 2, we're going to the pitcher card. 3 and a 4 goes to the batter card. A 5 will be a defensive checks. And 6 will go to the ballpark. And the red die determines all of that. So here we go. So we got a 1. So we're under Louis Tiant. And the cards for the pitchers, 1s are generic numbers or overall results. 2s, you get into splits. So right now, we're not in any splits. We're straight on the 1 here. And that's a 24. So we've got a 124. I'm sorry, 142. I gotta make sure I do it right. Red, white, and blue. 142. 142. So 142 on Tion's card is a fly to right field, and that's it. I guess it's just that simple, huh? Why is this thing not? There we go. Okay. So there we go. Pete Rose is out of there on a fly to right field. That brings up little Joe, Joe Morgan. Tiant, four, so we're under Morgan's card, and is going to be under the splits. He is facing a right-hander Tiant, so we're in this column. 481. 481 is an F8 plus plus R1, and that's talking about uh, the runner on first could move, possibly take a chance of moving up because the fly ball is so deep to center field. But in this case, with nobody on, Fred Lynn just tracks it down at the warning track for out number two. So Joe Morgan is retired. Tiant gets the first two out of there. Here is Johnny Bench. One sixty-five. So again, we're under the one here. One sixty-five is a three-to-one putout. So it's a ground ball to Cooper. He's going to flip the tee on covering, and the Reds go quietly here in the top of the first. Big red machine, not so big in the first third or first half of the inning. And now Don Gullett will be the pitcher for the Reds. And leading off for the Red Sox will be Dewey Evans, Dwight Evans. See what he can do. Six, so we're going to the ballpark card. Six takes us to Fenway Park. So we go to Fenway Park, and we get a 613. 613 on Fenway Park is a pop-up to second base. Now, if the pitcher was fatigued, we'd be over in this. I'm sorry, no, we wouldn't be. Uh, let's see, it's add five, the home team is batting. So the home team is batting, so it's going to be not just 6-13, it's going to be 6-18. But 
but that's still going to be in range here. It's not going to do anything. If the pitcher was fatigued, we'd go bump it up some more, but we're not into that yet. So it's a 613, but when the home team's batting, you add five, makes it a 618, but it's still going to be a foul out to the, or it might just be a pop up to second, I guess. I guess they universally use F and P interchangeable. So Dewey Evans is out as Morgan makes the play. One down. And the, the, the ballpark thing is pretty good about laying it out for you to remind you to do these different adjustments. Here's Denny Doyle. 385. So three run to Denny Doyle, but it's not under the splits. It's under the generic ones. So lefty lefty it won't matter. 385. 385 is a single right there. Base hit plus. That means he will get a chance to steal. And this is where my first time I got to go to the rule book. This is not the rule book necessarily, but the quick chart. Just to refresh my memory on how to steal. So here, steal attempt. And I'll go over it with you. Steal attempt. Establishing a lead. Now this is optional, but I still, I think if you're going to steal, you, you need to get a lead. So runner steal rating plus versus pitcher hold rating. And it has to be greater than or equal to 10 plus the hold rating. So the steal plus two die it has to be greater than or equal to 10 plus the hold rating. Okay, so let's do a little calculations on the cards. Hold rating for Gullet is an 8. So it has to be better than 18 in order for him to get a jump. So we're going to have the steal rating of Doyle. His steal rating is a 3. And we're going to add these dice to it. 3 and a... So that's 14. It's a total of 17. But it's not greater than because... With the plus 10, that makes his hold 18. 17 doesn't fit, so he cannot get the jump, and therefore there will not be a steal. So Denny Doyle will have to stay in pat, and that will bring up Carl Yastrzemski. Whoops, slipped out of my hand there. So I'm hoping doing all this correctly. If I make a mistake, that's just the way it is. Uh, it's called learning. All right, so six, we're back to Fenway Park. So let's get Fenway Park. In play, it's a 684. So, Fenway Park, a 684. 684 is a single plus plus, but remember, you add five because the home team's batting. That makes a 689, but it's still going to be a plus. plus. It, it, it almost got past that, but one more number would have been a double, but as it is, it's a single plus plus. And if I look to the chart, I'm assuming the single plus plus means the runner takes the extra base on first base and Doyle would get third. Let's see here. Single plus plus. It's a long single, so run on first does go to third. So Pretty intuitive there, I would say. So Denny Doyle will take third base on the base hit by Yastrzemski and the Red Sox are in business. Runners at the corners and only one out. Infield looking for the double play. And here comes Carlton Fisk, so they will lay back. They're not going to play in in the first inning. Gullet could use a strikeout right about now as well. 106, and he might get it here. Let's see, 106 is a 3XX. So that's interesting. I'm not sure what 3XX means, but we'll figure it out. 3XX says redirect to a different roll, keeping the last two digits of the same. So example... Redirect. Okay, so we're going to do what's called a redirect. That's what it says here on the chart. We're going to do a read. If it's in red, it's a 3XX. It's redirect to a different roll, keeping the last two digits of the same. So the last two digits are here, 06. We will keep the O and the 6. They stay the same. But we're going to re-roll this one. And we get a 2. So that looks like we get a 206. So let's see here, 206. So let's see what 206 does on Gullet's card. And again, I hope I'm doing this correctly. 206 goes to the splits, and that has 4XX because we're on the righty batter, Fisk, and that means 4XX. So let's go to the 4XX. You get more interesting here. 4XX. Where is the 4XX? i got to find the 4XX here. And I may need to pause the video just to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. So let me pause the video while I look up the rules. Okay, so I think I messed that up. 
the, this is a 3XX, so I'm not going to re-roll to change the number. I'm automatically going to change it from a 1 to a 3. So the original roll was a 106. It's going to change to a 306. So let's do that. 306 actually goes to Fisk card, and a 306 is a strikeout. So hopefully I did that correctly. Hopefully I fixed that and got that correctly. But like I said, I'm a learning. And any if anybody that's an expert at this game or very good at this game at least and catches me doing something in the video that's incorrect, please let me know so I can learn. It is a learning thing. I don't take offense to it. I want to know what I'm doing wrong so I can get, you know, I want to play the game correctly. I don't care who wins. I just want to play the game correctly and have fun. All right, so here is Freddie Lynn now with two outs and runners at the corners, and Gullet needed that strikeout big time. 250. 250 against Freddie Lynn, a lefty. 250. And look at that. That's a single plus. So against a righty, actually got him out, but kind of reverse split here. As you can see on Gullet's card, he hit two lefties hit 252, righty's only 210. So he had kind of reverse split, and there's that difference right here. So instead of a ground ball to short, it's a single plus. So let's see what happens on the single plus as far as base running goes. Run on first just goes to second, it says. So Yastrzemski, even with two outs, and I don't know if there's a, if you get a boost for two outs, I didn't see anything in there about two outs. Uh, really no note in here that I can see that talks about two outs. I'm sure it's in there somewhere, but I just don't see it at the moment. So we're just going to go with that. And the Red Sox take a 1-0 lead on the RBI single from Freddie Lynn. As Denny Doyle trots across the plate. And the Reds lead at 1. I'm sorry, the Red Sox lead it by the score of 1-0. That's going to bring up Rico Petroselli, the third baseman. With two on and two outs. Gullet, six, so we're going to Fenway again. 653, but again, you add five, makes it actually a 658. So 658 will be a wild pitch. So how about that? I'm sorry, I was looking through. 658 is going to be a 64, my bad. Result is in purple. That means you change it to a single if the infield's in, but with two outs, the infield is back. So it's just going to be a ground ball to short. That Concepcion handles, and at the end of one, uh, one inning of play, the Red Sox take a 1-0 lead on the Reds and turn that over to Louis Tiant to try to preserve it as much as possible. And we go to the top of the second. And coming up for the Reds will be Tony Perez. Perez will lead off against Louis Tiant. 1-0 Boston after 1. That is a 357, like a 357 Magnum. 3 is over here for Tony Perez in his non-split category. 357 is a strikeout. So Tony Perez whiffs on the Louis Tiant offering. 1 down for power hitting George Foster. That's a 6-0-3, so we go to the ballpark, and since the visiting team is batting, we don't add anything. 6-0-3 by itself is a strikeout on Fenway Park. So another K for Louis Tiant. He's got the Reds baffled with his mesmerizing windup and all the twisting and turning and gyrations he does. That'll bring up Dave Concepcion, the shortstop. 403 and a 4. We're going to Concepcion on the split side. Tiant's a righty, so 403 is a strikeout. So Louis Tiant will strike out the side. Had he been facing a lefty, he would have walked, but he wasn't. He was playing facing Tiant, so he strikes out. So how about that? Louis Tiant strikes out the side. And talk about a shutdown inning after your team gives you the lead. He just did it. So coming up for the Red Sox will be the rooster, Rick Burleson. Rick Burleson, the rooster, will lead off the bottom of the second. Gullet, six, and we're on to ballpark again. 616, but again, home team is batting, so it turns to 621. 621 is a pop up to short. So pop up to short for one away as Burleson pops up to Concepcion. One shortstop for tying the other, and here comes first baseman Cecil Cooper. 
two, two, four. Gullet on the split chance against the lefty batter, two, two, four. Four, six, three double play is what it would be, but we're just, nobody on base is just going to be a four, three ground out. So two down very quickly. And that brings up Louis Tiant. Remember in the 75 series, the pitchers had to hit, and they have pitcher hitting cards that are generic. I didn't see anything differently uh, based on pitcher's ability. So all I can do, uh, as far as I know, this is what you use. So let's see if it comes off the pitcher card or comes off the uh, batter card or park card or defense. We get a 408, and of course it's going to come off the batter card. 408. So we go to 408 is an I rating. 408. Let's see here. So it's an I rating. That's weird. Uh, let's. Oh, we go up to Tiant's pitcher hitting card or pitcher card and it says the I rating is a two. So we go over here to two. A two, a 408 on a two is a 643 double play on a two, but. So they're not necessarily generic. There are some differences depending on how well they have an I rating. In other words, Gullah has a three, and he has a two. And actually, had Gullah been doing that, well, it still would have been the same thing, but there could be a different one. But nobody on base is the ground ball to Concepcion, and the inning is over. And we go to the top of the third. Still one nothing, favor of the Red Sox. Due up for the Reds, it'll be Ken Griffey. Bottom of the order, Griffey, Geronimo, and the pitcher Gullet. Tiant struck out the side in the second. Five. We finally get a fielding check, and look at this. It's a 5-0-0. Zero, zero. So that ought to be interesting right there by itself. 5-0-0. Zero, zero. So this one may take me a, to the quick reference chart to see if that 0-0 zero, zero matters or not. Let's see here. 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Let's go to fielding. And here we go, five zero. Okay, for rolls of five zero zero to five oh nine, we go to the rare plays, and of course I didn't print out the rare plays, so I wasn't ready for rare plays. That's the one thing I didn't want to print out because I want to save some paper. So we will skip that and re-roll. It's called a foul ball, but five hundred to five oh nine would take you to the rare play chart, but I don't have that up, so we'll go on. 163, kind of a bummer, but you know, always forget something when you're doing these things. 163 right here, it's a 3 1 ground out. And it's a ground ball to Cooper, who flips to Tiant covering one away, which is kind of a bummer because I really wanted to see that. I, I, I've heard that season ticket baseball has probably the most robust rare play charts of any game. So I definitely want to get, when I print out everything else, I want to. Uh, you know, print, but it's a lot of rare plays. I, I was trying to save on paper and uh, trying to be a little frugal there, and it cost me. That's what I get for doing, being frugal. All right, here's Geronimo. 670. It's a ballpark card, 670. Geronimo Visitor, so no bump, just straight out 670. 670 is a bloop single. How about that? A bloop single for Cesar Geronimo. First hit of the game for the Reds, and it is Cesar Geronimo. All right, that's going to bring up the pitcher bat, uh, the pitcher batting card of Gullet. Now, if we want to bunt, let's bring in Gullet's card and his bunt rating. His bunt rating is a four, so we keep that in mind. His bunt rating is a four. So let's look at the bunts and figure out how we do the bunts. Bunts. Where are you, bunts? You would think that would have been on the quick reference, but I don't see it on the quick reference, so let's check it in the regular rule book and see what happens on bunts. I don't like to bunt very often, but it's, it's a, I think this is kind of a almost a half-to bunt on this one. Uh, let's see, bunts, bunts, bunts. There's got to be bunt. Thing here we go, bunting. All right, let's see here, bunting, sacrifice. Okay, use the bunt in any situation. All right, so we're going to do the two blue and the white plus the bunt rating. I'm sorry, all three dice add them up plus the bunt rating. His bunt rating is a four, so we're going to roll these together. And 
and add them up and we get a total of 12 plus the four it makes it a 16 and the 16 bunt rating according to the rule book the 16 bunt rating is a fielder's choice to the first baseman on a 16 bunt rating so it says c below so i guess okay so come on over here uh so it's, they're gonna get it's a fielder's choice which means they're gonna get the lead runner it's not a good bunt so geronimo is retired for out number two and gullet since i'll put him in the base pass so we know who's on there not the batting card so gullet fails couldn't get the bunt down the out is going to go oh i didn't see who who made the play uh let's see does it say who made the play or is there a way to tell who made the play does it say who how you figure out who the fielder is oh it said on your first baseman so it's a three four a three to six fielder's choice because it was bunted to cooper he throws to burleson covering for out number two back to the top of the order and pete rose again i'm new so you're going to get a little bit of uh the game's not going to flow quite as good as would be for somebody who's experienced in the game but i kind of want to do a, a newbie approach to so that way people that aren't familiar with card and dice games or, or at least not this game can see what it's like when you're starting the beginning tiant 254 so that does go to a split rose is a switch hitter bang left 254 254 is a deep drive to right field how about that now on the ballpark because of the weather because of the temperature rather deep drives you subtract one we subtract one from the deep drive because of the weather this is a deep drive to right so we're in this column right here and we're going to use the power rating plus these two dice his power rating is a three we roll these and add these to the three and we get a 12 here plus three is a 15 15 is a fly ball deep to right field run on second could try for third it's the third out so it's irrelevant at this point anyway but pete rose not enough power to get it out of here if he had more power got good chances for home runs but that's not what happened there so plus the fact it was a minus one because of the temperature made it even worse for pete rose and now we go to the bottom of the third and gullet back out and it's the top of the order for the red sox dewey evans and like i said i'm going to hold any thoughts on the game until the very end i want to play the game without making editorial comments as i go along 181 for gullet that's on the non-split section 181 is a walk so dwight evans will draw a leadoff walk and that's not what you want to do if you're the pitcher you don't want to walk the leadoff man not usually a good thing evans on the year stole three bases but was caught four times so i think we're going to get let uh now we could let doyle bunt hmm i wonder if i should let doyle bunt that's a possibility so we go back to our bunt rating doyle's bunt rating is a six and let's see here six so we're going to do all three dice plus the six so we get a 18 here plus a six is a 24 and a 24 on a bunt rating 24 a 24 is five four question mark all runs advanced batter out if the arm plus these three three things are greater than 10 plus the speed oh so that's a mouthful right there so let's do some calculations on what we have for speed denny doyle's speed rating is a four and we're going to add 10 to that so it's 14. so we need the arm of the fielder in this case it is the third baseman rose his arm rating is at third base is a one so we got a one plus the three die and that has to be greater than a total of 14 greater than or equal to 14. so these th three things have to add up to more than 13 if he's going to make the force play and they do that's a total of 20 there so we got 21 so that is greater than the uh it says batter out okay all runs are advanced but it was a chance that it would be a, a an actual hit that he would beat out but it's actually going to be a good play by rose and i'll show that on the charts right here and hopefully i did it correctly but what i'm what i'm looking at right here 
It says here, five, four, question mark. It says, all runners advance, batter out if the arm plus the three die is greater than or equal to 10 plus the batter speed, which it was. It was a 21 total here, only about, I think, a 16 there. So, um, actually, about 14 there. So, plenty of uh, time for Rose to make that play. But the bunt was down, and it's going to go five to four covering first base. Sacrifice bunt by Doyle, five to four, one away. And that will bring up Captain Carl Yastrzemski. Evans in scoring position now. Build it. 396, that goes to Yastrzemski with the non-split section. 396 is going to be a 4-6-3 double play, but so it's a good thing they did the bunt. It's going to treat as a 4-3, which means Evans does take third base, but now there are two outs. So two down, but at least the bunt got him out of the double play. That would have been a double play had they been a runner on first. So two down, and that's going to send it up to Carlton Fisk, Pudge, trying to, trying to get the uh, Red Sox another run if they can against Gullet. 238 for Gullet, and that's in split section. Fisk is a righty, so 238 on this side. And that's a 4-6-3 double play if people are on base. Otherwise, it's just a 4-3 round out to end the inning. And the Red Sox unable to add to the lead, but they do maintain a 1-0 lead through three. We go to the top of the fourth. Still 1-0 Red Sox. Coming up the Reds will be Little Joe, followed by Bench and Perez. Keont, 240. 240, we go to our splits. Morgan's a lefty, so come on this side. 240. 240 is a 5-8-X. So we're going to redirect, I believe, on this. Go back to our redirect screen or rule page. Go to our redirect. 5-8-X redirect with roll, keeping the last digit the same. So the last digit was a zero. But we're going to redirect and make it a 580. So that's what the 58X means. So we're going to change this to a 5 and change this to an 8 on a redirect. And we get a total of 580, which is a defensive check all of a sudden. So 580 is a defensive check on the center fielder, 8 being the center field position. So it is a center fielder defensive check. And now I can remember where I put my defensive charts. I just had them. You've seen them already, so you knew I had them. Now I just got to figure out where I put them. I set stuff down sometimes, and sometimes you forget where you put things. And now I can't find it. That's rather interesting. Let me pause the video until I can find my charts. Well, I have no idea what happened to those tables. I just had them. They're around here somewhere. They couldn't have gone. I mean, you saw them in the beginning of the video. I just don't know where I placed them. But anyway, it's a 580, which is a defensive check on Lynn. 580 to 585 is simply a fly to center. Had a runner bit on third, they would have a chance to risk it and go home. But in this case, with the bases empty, it's just a medium deep fly to center field. And Morgan is retired. So it's kind of weird. I had something in front of me, and now I can't can't find it. I'm sure that never happens to anybody else, but it seems to happen when I do it once in a while. I don't know what causes it, but either way we go. We can drive on. I didn't want to hold anything else up. And here is Johnny Bench. Tiant now, 220. So Tiant, 220, with split chance against the righty. 220 is a 6-4-3 double play, but again, with nobody on, it's just a 6-3 ground out. Burleson over to Cooper, two down. And that brings up tough Tony Perez. But nobody on the Reds is tough right now because Tion is having his way with them. Five, seven, I'm sorry, 571. So again, we go to the defensive chart. Five and a seven is the left fielder Yastrzemski. And now we're going to go to that secondary defensive chart because keep in mind Yastrzemski is only rated at first base here, but he really plays left field as well. And we go by his ratings. 
and left field let's see what the I think we go by his range ratings if I'm not mistaken look at the rule book on that it was on page oh here we go I now I found them I had them in the back of my rule book there I, I didn't lose the charts they're here so we're good all right so Yastrzemski go to the secondary defensive charts Ratings based defense. That's what it says here. Ratings based defense. So we got a ratings based defense. All right. So outfielders, as without the batter is out, the blue die is equal to or lower than the fielder's range. Okay. Fielder's range. The range of Yastrzemski in left is a five. The blue die is a one, so that means Yastrzemski is able to get to it, and the inning's over. I believe it's just as simple as that. I could be wrong, but I think that's the way it's played on that secondary uh, roll like that. You check the rating rather than what's on the card. And that's going to do it for the Reds here in the fourth. They are done. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Still a one nothing Boston Red Sox lead. Call it back out. His stamina is six. Tiant's stamina is also showing six. So we'll see what happens on that once we get there. Uh, leading off for the Red Sox will be Freddie Lynn, center fielder. He will be leading off against Gullet. Lynn had an RBI single his first chance. Drove in the only run of the game. That's a 294, so we're under Gullet splits. 294, and that is a deep drive to right field. Now again, we're going to lose one because of the cold weather. So we'll go to our ballpark card on the deep drive, but we're going to lose one because of the weather. And the deep drive again goes to, it's against the lefty, so it goes to right field, deep drive right field. And again, we're doing the power rating plus the two numbers. His power rating's an eight, so that's pretty good. So we're going to add eight to these two dice rolls. Eight, eight, 16, 17. So we've got a 17 on the deep fly to right. 17, oh, he just missed a home run. 18 would have been a homer. And actually, it's not 17, it's 16 because you lose one. So 16 would bring it right here. It's just a deep fly to right. Fred Lynn just missed it. And right by the Red Sox bullpen, Ken Griffey is able to haul it in and retire Mr. Lynn. So Freddie almost got that home run, but just missed it. Cold weather may have had something to do with it as well. Here's Rico Petroselli. 255 and again that's under the splits on gullet 255 against a righty is a 5-4-3 double play but with nobody on it's just a 5-3 to three ground out rose to perez two quick outs and it's going to bring up the rooster rick burleson that is a 520 so we're doing a check of the catcher defense and this time i do have my defensive sheets ready to go since I knew where they are now. They're not buried anywhere. So the 5 2 0. So we go to Johnny Bench. Johnny Bench, right here, catcher. 5 2 0. Since that blue die is a zero, if it was a zero to five, he frames a strikeout. Six to eight, it would have been a foul out. And a nine, if that blue die was a nine, it'd be a walk. But here, it's a strikeout. So Johnny Bench frames the pitch. And Burleson is caught looking to end the inning. Four innings in the books. Still one nothing favor of the Carmines. And that will send up the Reds to try to get some runs against Tiant to start the fifth. It'll be George Foster, Concepcion, and then Griffey due up for the Reds. Tiant, 5 oh six. Again, that's a rare play, but I don't have the rare play stuff in front of me, so we're going to Skip it and call it a foul ball. 4-15. I really wish I'd had those now because I bet that would have been fun. 4-15 for Tiant. We're going to go to Foster on his split side against the righty. 4-15 is a 6-4-3 double play, but again, just a 6-3 ground out with nobody on. And Burleson retires Foster. Brings up Concepcion. Short stop. Tiant, 525. So defense, and that's a two, which going back to the catcher again. So that is Fisk. 
So Fisk now on a 525 means it's a foul out to Fisk. If that blue die had been a four or less, it would have been a strikeout, but since it's a five, it's a foul out. I mean, it's still an out, but you don't get the strikeout extra, you know, energy of a strikeout on it. You just get the foul out. Two down for Ken Griffey. And I feel like I'm playing the game okay, but i got a feeling I'll probably make a mistake somewhere along the line if I haven't already. 398, so we're under Griffey under the non-splits. 398 is, again, a 4-6-3 double play, but in this case, simply a ground ball to Doyle to end the inning. So Tion still large and in charge, and the Red Sox still maintain that one nothing lead. The one run in the first inning has held up so far. Gullet and Tion in a pitching duel. And that's going to bring up Cecil Cooper to lead off, followed by Tiant. So Cooper against Gullet, 268. 268 is the splits against the lefty batter. 268 is going to be a 5-3-X. That means we're going to change it to a 5-3-8. So 538. So what the new roll is going to turn to on that redirect. So it's a 5-3-8. A five, a three, and an eight. So we had a five, three, eight. And we go to the defense and a five and a three. The three is the first baseman. In this case, that is Tony Perez. So look at Perez's defense. Perez's defense right here. And the eight means that's going to be a single that gets by Tony Perez. So the blue die being high like that allowed Cooper to sneak it past him. And that's a leadoff single. And now Tion is up to bunt, obviously. I do have the pitcher generic hitting card right here, but I want to get his bunt rating involved as well, which, according to this, is only a one, which makes sense because Tion's an American League pitcher and did not bat. So we go back to the bunt procedure. Let me go back and get the bunt procedure. And we're going to do all three dice plus the bunt rating of a one. And that gives us a 15 there, plus the one is a 16. 16 says, 16 says, fielder's choice to the first baseman. Fielder's choice to the first baseman. So it's the fielder's choice to the first baseman. Now it says C below, so I'm not sure. All right, fielder's choice, a bunt easily fielded by the pitcher first baseman or third baseman the fielder must choose one of the following okay so it's not an automatic fielder's choice or not an automatic force play it's the choice of the fielder do you get take the automatic out or do you try to do this now it went to first tony perez's arm rating is a two at first base and you roll all three dice plus the two and see if it's greater than or equal to the 10 plus the runner speed well since it's the pitcher batting you kind of feel like you have to go for the because his, his speed is zero, so it just has to beat 10. You just need the, the, the dice, the three dice have to equal eight or better because he's got a two arm rating. So as long as these three dice total more than eight, he'll make the force play. And they do, obviously. So they get the force play. It is a fielder's choice. Tiant is safe at first base. They didn't take they didn't take the shore out. With Tiant running, they knew they had a chance to get the lead runner, and they did. So that's going to go three to six on a fielder's choice failed bunt. The so fielder's choice for Tion on a failed bunt play, one down. Back to the top of the order in Dewey Evans. And again, I'm hoping I'm doing this correctly, but um, I guess I'll get feedback hopefully <laughs> to tell me if I am or not. 471, that's under Evans and under the splits. So against color the lefty, 471 is a triple for Dwight Evans. Dwight Evans just hit a triple. Tiant will score. And the Red Sox lead it two to nothing thanks to the Dewey Evans triple. I think that was pretty self-explanatory. I couldn't have done that wrong, I don't guess. That is a triple for Dewey Evans. And now the infield's gonna have to come in. The Reds can't afford to give up any more runs. Down two nothing the way Tiant's pitching, so. Infield is in for Gullet for a Doyle. 193. 193 is a bloop single to first base. How about that? Can't catch a break, can you, Mr. Gullet? And Denny Doyle just singles to give the Red Sox now a 3-0 lead. 
Sparky not happy, and the bullpen is active for the Reds. Pedro Borbone, the righty, is loosening. And Captain Hook might be out very shortly. Here's Gullet to Doyle, trying to minimize the damage. 537, that could be trouble. 53 is the first baseman Perez. So we go to his defensive numbers. And a seven falls in that single six to eight. That blue die is a seven, so it's a base hit. It is a base hit. Now let's see about base running advancement. Doyle, the base hit pass first. So let's check the base running advancement and see what we get. Just says runner one base is all it says. So there's no pluses or anything that means you just get the generic one base. So Yastrzemski sneaks it past Tony Perez for a base hit. And the hit parade continues. And we bring up Carlton Fisk. So Fisk is up, gullet on his, hanging on by a thread. 574. So that is another defensive check to left field this time. We go to George Foster. And the blue die is a four. Foster, blue die a four, is a fly to left. Run on third could try to score, but nobody's on third. Simply fly to left. Four out, number two. So big out there. It wasn't deep enough to do anything. And that's going to bring up Freddie Lynn. Gullet trying to get out of this. Minimize the damage. 690 on the ballpark card. That could be interesting. That's an awful large number. Go to the ballpark card. And a 690. 690 on the ballpark card. 690. That is a double on the ballpark card. 690. That is a double. Actually, no. 695 because you add 5 for the home team batting. So it's actually 695, which is going to be a walk. So how about that? It took a double away and made it a walk. So it is going to walk the bases loaded. The bases are now loaded with Red Sox. And that's going to be it for Don Gullett. Sparky cannot go any further. The ninth man to bat in the inning is coming up. That is Mr. Petroselli. He's a righty. So the Reds are going to the pen for veteran right-hander Pedro Borbone. So Pedro Borbone is going to come in and see if he can stop the bleeding. If at all possible. Gullet is going to go four and two-thirds innings. Giving up three runs, but he's responsible for all three on the base pads. So Borbone, and, and I, in reading the rules, I didn't see any boost that the pitcher gets for coming in. Like they do in some games where they get an advantage for coming in and relief in the middle of an inning. So we're just going to play it as it is. No advantage. Borbone, 684. So... Again, back to the ballpark card, but we add five, makes a 689. And a 689 is going to be a single plus plus. So single plus plus. And on the reference chart, single plus plus. Run on first goes to third. Run on second and third will score. So two run single from Petroselli. And the Red Sox have blown this thing open five to nothing. As Doyle and Yastrzemski score. Sparky looking at... We're bone with disdain, and the Red Sox lead it. They have now batted around as the man that led off the inning, Petroselli, will come up again. So Rico, he led off the inning. Not Rico, I'm sorry. Burleson. No, Cooper led off the inning. So Burleson is actually the ninth man to bat in the inning. So... Some people call that batting around too. I call it batting around when the, when a guy bats twice, but you can have your own definition. Burleson, the batter. 356. That goes to the batter card without the splits. 356 is a foul out to first or pop up to first, however you want to look at it. And the inning is over. But four runs for the Red Sox, and they take a commanding 5 nothing lead as we go to the sixth. Reds are stunned. Tiant. And I didn't look up the actual score of, the, of game one, but I think the Red Sox won it pretty handily. So maybe maybe this is uh, you know doing okay with that as far as that goes. We shall see. Tiant back out. This is the sixth inning, so he's still not fatigued yet, but next inning he's got to worry about that. 
Coming up for the Reds will be Geronimo and then a pinch hitter for Warbone. So they will need more activity in their bullpen. And let's see who they're going to have in the bullpen. They're going to have Clay Carroll loosely in the bullpen. As that's all for Warbone. And we'll need a pinch hitter as well. And I believe the pinch hitter for the Reds will be Dan Dreesen. So Dreesen will come on and hit after Geronimo. And then Clay Carroll will come in and pitch for the Reds. But first things first, it is Geronimo against Tion. 404. 400 would go to the splits. 404 against a right hander is a walk. So Geronimo draws the leadoff walk. And down 5 0. You're definitely not bunting, but it is going to be Danny Dreesen pinch hitting. See if he can keep it going for the Reds for the Reds, rather. Danny Dreesen. Three ninety-eight. 398. We go to Dreesen non splits. And a 398 is a pinch hit two run homer for Dan Dreesen. How about that? A pinch hit two run homer. Sparky made the right move there. Pulled the right strings to get the right guy at the plate. And Dreesen just drilled it. A two run homer off of Teant. And all of a sudden, it's a five to two ball game. So don't count the Reds out just yet. And in fact, you might see some activity stirring in the Red Sox bullpen all of a sudden after that. Pete Rose will back come back out. And in the Reds, uh, Red Sox bullpen, rather, they do have activity down there. They do have a left-hander Jim Burton loosening. Pete Rose now up 451, and that's a split chance against a righty. 4-5-1 is a strikeout against a lefty that I'm sorry, 4-5-1 is a single. I was looking at the wrong spot. That is a single for Pete Rose. Almost misread that. So Pete Rose keeping it going with a base hit, and Teant may be fading. As Burton's loosening as fast as he can, as is the right-hander down there, Jim Willoughby. So double barrel action in the Red Sox bullpen. Here's Morgan, 517. So the one means we're going to the pitcher card defense. Pitcher defense and a seven. So let's look at Teant and his defense. Well, actually, the card's right here as well, I guess. You could look at it that way as well. So we'll just keep it right here because it's right here. You don't need the chart. The seven is a single to center field because the blue die is a seven. It's a single to center field. And the hit parade continues. And the big red machine saying, don't count us out yet. Still nobody out. And here comes Johnny Bench. And this might be near the end for Teant. Willoughby is ready to face Perez next if Teant can't get Bench. Still nobody out. 349 for Bench. 349 is a strikeout. So we got a break there. Teant was able to strike out Bench. So that'll keep him in the game a little longer to face Tony Perez. So Tony Perez is up with one out now in a 5-2 game. Two on, one out. Here's Perez. Tion hanging on by a thread. 6-31. We're going to the ballpark chart. 6-3-1. Visiting team is batting, so no additions. 6-31 is going to be a fly to center field. So fly to center. Two down. Perez is out. And that's going to send up. Mr. Foster. Two down now, so pressure time for Foster. 148 for Teant. 148 is a fly to left, and that's going to end the inning. So Teant escapes, allowing just the two runs. Could have been a lot worse, but the Reds are certainly back in the game with a score of 5-2. to two. And Clay Carroll will be coming on for the Reds. Now, Teant is scheduled to bat second this inning, so I think he's, we're going to get a pinch hitter for Teant. I think that's going to be it for Teant. Clay Carroll will be coming on to pitch. Teant's day is done. And let's take a look at what we got. Actually, it's going to be left-hander Jim Burton. It's going to be coming on for the Red Sox. Coming on for the – I'm sorry, for the Reds. Yeah, for the Red Sox. But coming on to pinch hit, not yet. He's one batter too early. Cooper actually is going to lead off. He's the scheduled hitter. But Bernie Carbo is swinging a bat on deck. 
for the Red Sox. So Bernie Carbo will pinch hit here in the bottom of the sixth after Cecil Cooper. But right now, Clay Carroll, your batter. Third pitcher for the Reds. And Gullet ends up being charged with all five runs. So he's on the hook for the loss if it stays this way. 649. But again, home team batting up it by five. Makes it a 654. 654 is going to be a 5-4 ground up. So it's going to be, well, it's going to be, I don't know why it says 5-4 on there. Anyways, on base, so it's going to be a just a 5-3 to three ground out. It would have been a force play at second had a runner been at first. But instead, Rose just throws over to Perez for out number one. And now Bernie Carbo will do the pinch hitting for the Red Sox against Clay Carroll. 194. 194 is going to be a bloop double. Bloop double for Bernie Carbo. So he gets a pinch hit double. Bernie Carbo, Bernie being Bernie, with a pinch hit double. And now here comes Dewey Evans. Had that big triple his last time up. That's a 272. So we're under the splits. Righty, righty. 272 is a 5 4 3 double play. But it's just going to be a 5 3 ground out with the runner holding. He cannot get to third on that ball, hit the third base. So two down for Denny Doyle. Denny Doyle, the batter. 134. 134 is a fly to left, and that's going to end the inning. So Clay Carroll keeps his team in the game. It is now still 5 to 2 as we go to the top of the seventh. Carbo did his job with the double, but couldn't get any further. And coming in for the Red Sox will be left hander Jim Burton. Willoughby is still in the bullpen ready, but there's two out of three lefties coming up. We got Concepcion, and then we got Griffey and Geronimo. So they're going to go with the lefty Jim Burton in back of Tiant. Tiant goes six innings, gives up two runs, so he's certainly in line to get the victory if the Red Sox don't lose the lead. Right now, Jim Burton facing Concepcion, Griffey, and Geronimo. 563, so we go to our defensive chart. The six is the shortstop, and that is Mr. Burleson. So we go to Burleson, and the blue die is a three. So that's going to be a 6-4-3 double play if anybody's on base, but instead it's just a 6-3 ground out. One away. So 6-3 ground out. One down. And that's going to send us to Griffey for a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup with Jim Burton. Burton held lefties to 254 average, righties hit 289 against him. So, but really, yeah, there's a couple of spots here where it's different against lefties, so that's where it helps, I guess. 402. And we do get splits lefty against lefty. 402, though, is a walk on Griffey's card. So Griffey will draw the walk. So Griffey walks, brings up Geronimo, and the They'll need a pinch hitter for Clay Carroll as well, and I think it's going to be Merv Rettman. Geronimo, 267. That is a split chance for Burton against a lefty. 267, still going to be a deep drive to right field. Still going to be a deep drive to right. Now, we do lose one because of the weather. Geronimo's power is a three. So we're going to add these two to the number three and then subtract one. So we're actually going to subtract one from his power, makes him a two, and then we add these two together. We get a 10, so if we add two to that, makes it a 12. 12 on a deep drive is a double. Run on first can try to score, but down by three, I think they're going to play it safe. And Geronimo gets a double off the deep drive of Burton. Geronimo with the double, and with only one out, they've got runners at second and third, and Merv Redman will get the pinch hitting call for the Reds. Runners on second and third and one out. Infield will, of course, play back because they want outs. They need outs more so than they need runs. They or need to, to protect the run. They need outs. So Burton will be facing the pinch hitter Merv Redman. Infield is back, of course. They need the outs. So 
Burton just needs to get anything where he can get an out, whether run scores or not, is irrelevant. 400. How about that? Right on the button. 400. And a 400 by Rettman against the lefty is a walk, and that's going to load the bases. So Burton in all kinds of trouble. And now Rose is coming up. Rose. Well, what do you do here? He's a switch hitter, and Morgan is next as a lefty. So I think they're going to leave him in to face Rose. Although Willoughby is still loosening in the bullpen and ready. 2-23. 2-23 is a split chance. Rose is a switch hitter batting right-handed. 2-23. 6-4-3 double play. Just what the doctor ordered. 6-4-3 double play. Gets him out of it. How do you like that? He, he has all kinds of trouble, but he gets through it with no runs allowed. The Reds leave the bases loaded. And Sparky cannot be happy at all. Seventh inning stretch time here at Fenway, and the Red Sox still lead it by the score of five to two. And now we need a new pitcher for the Reds. And coming up for the Red, and that's all for Burton as well. His day is done. They will have Willoughby coming in pitch the top of the eighth. But for the bottom of the seventh, we're going to have Yastrzemski, Lin, Fisk, and Lynn. So the Reds will turn to Will McEnany, lefty out of the bullpen. Will McEnany will be on. Held lefties to a 238 average, where righties got him at 278. So they're hoping that's the charm for that, to keep it score where it is. Captain Carl Yastrzemski will lead it off here, bottom of the seventh, 5-2 Red Sox. Game one of the 75 series. 413 for Will McEnany. We're going to go to Yastrzemski on the splits. And a 413 is a walk. So Yastrzemski draws the leadoff walk. And that's going to send us to Carlton Fisk. Fisk is your batter. 448. 448. We go to the splits against the lefty. 448 is a single to center. It would have been a strikeout against a righty, but. Against the lefty, it's a single to center. So there you go. I mean, they're trying to play the percentages because of the two out of three are lefties, and they just got caught. And this might be all for McEnany. Although they're running out of good pitchers in the bullpen. The only good pitcher they have left in the bullpen is Eastwick, and everybody else is kind of meh. So they're kind of dependent on McEnany to get it done. 383. 383 goes to the non-split section. 383 is a 363 double play. How about that? Boy, talk about getting a break. 363 double play. Yastrzemski will go to third, but now there are two outs. That was huge. That was most definitely huge. 363 double play turned nicely by Perez and Concepcion. And here is Petroselli. McEnany, 5-4-9. Defensive check, and that 9 is problematic. 5 and a 4 is a second baseman, Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan, even as good as Morgan is, a 9 is going to be an E4. So Morgan boots it, and that will allow Yastrzemski to score, and the Red Sox take a 6-2 lead. E4, huge error by Morgan. Allows the run to score unearned. Can't fault McEnany. That should have been the end of the inning. So that was not McEnany's fault whatsoever. That was little Joe trying to hurry his throw and just or hurry the play and forgot he didn't have the ball. So here's Burleson with the – oh, I'm sorry. Runner should be at first there, shouldn't he? Petroselli on the air. He's at first with two down. 4-16, and that's the split chance against the lefty. 4-16 is a 6-4-3 double play, but again – it's going to be a 6-4 to four fielder's choice to end the inning. But we go to the 8th. It is 6-2 to two in favor of the Red Sox. That's all for McEnany. His day is done. And coming on for the Red Sox to pitch will be Jim Willoughby. So Willoughby is coming on. The right-hander, Jim Willoughby. And he will be facing... Morgan, Bench, and Perez. 
So a lefty to begin with, but then two righties. So Willoughby will be on there to face Little Joe. Top of the A6-2 Red Sox. 273, and we're going to the split chance against the lefty. 273 is a deep drive to right field. So back to the ballpark again. Minus one for the deep drive. So we take one away from his power rating. His power is a six, becomes a five. We add these other two dice to the five and see what we get. Five, and that's a 10, so it's 15. 15 on a deep drive is simply a fly to right. So we hit it well, but do we have tracked it down near the bullpen? We're out number one. That's going to bring up Johnny Bench. Four sixty-five. Four sixty-five is the split chance for Bench against the righties. Four six-five. He doubles to center field. So how about that, Johnny Bench with a double? And that's going to bring up Tony Perez. And now Dick Drago loosening the Red Sox bullpen just in case Willoughby falters. That's a 104. 104 is a three. It's a modifier three. So it's going to be become a 304. So let's change this to 304. So it's a 304 instead. So 304 goes to Tony Perez's car and he strikes out. So got a break there that it was a 3X and not a 5X or something. So. Hope I did that correctly, where it goes to a 3 because it said 3x. So you keep the 3 and, and change the other numbers. So, actually, no, that's not. Let me fix that. We got to we got to fix the other. We got to re-roll the other numbers. My bad. We changed. We keep the 3 and then re-roll the other 2. So my bad on that. That's a 76 or 67 rather. So that's a big difference. 367. So it's a 36. Whoops. 367. If I can get the things in here correctly. Three, boy, can't get a six here, can we? 367 is now the new roll. So Tony Perez, a 367 is a fly to right. So it won't be a strikeout. It'll be a fly to right instead. But either way, it's an out for out number two. Now, the fly to right plus plus, though, probably allows the runner to get to third, I would think. Let's see, fly plus plus. Yep, they tag in advance. So bench does go to third. He will go to third. But now there are two outs. So Red Sox don't care about him going to third. It really is irrelevant. And that brings up George Foster. Willoughby, 540. So second baseman in this case is Denny Doyle. But the fact the blue die has a zero is good for Boston because on Denny Doyle, zero on the blue die is going to be a 4-6-3 double play, but in this case, simply a 4-3 ground out to end the inning. So the Reds come away empty despite the double. It's going to do it for Boston. And we go to the bottom of the eighth, and the Reds will bring in a new pitcher. And it'll be, well, it won't, they're not, not going to use their closer. It would be ridiculous to use their closer, I think. So they're going to bring on Pat Darcy. Pat Darcy is in to pitch. You wouldn't, if you're playing like a series or something, you wouldn't bring in your closer and burn him for the next game. You want to keep him fresh for game two. So, but Dick, uh, and actually Dick Drago will not be coming in for the Red Sox because it's not a save situation anymore. Looks like they have, uh, instead, they have left-handed activity or actually let's see well you know what they might go ahead and go to Drago because you don't want to take a chance of giving the Reds anything to get positive about so they will keep it that way Cecil Cooper is going to be the leadoff hitter Red Sox could have brought in Fred Norman I guess but you got lefty pinch hitter and a righty so kind of really doesn't matter at this point Darcy 256 and that's against the split 256 and how about that a single it would have, I guess it did matter against the righty it would have gotten an out but against the lefty it's a base hit so maybe it did matter so now we get the pinch hitter for the Red Sox as they pinch hit for Willoughby 
And the pinch hitter coming on for the Red Sox will be, since a righty is on the mound, they will go to a lefty off the bench, and that is going to be Rick Miller. It's Miller time for the Red Sox. He will be in to pinch hit here in the eighth against Darcy. That's a 280. 280 goes to the split chance again against the lefty. 280 is a 5-3-X. So we're gonna, that means we're going to change the last number. So it's going to be a 5 and a 3. So we're going to a defensive check. But we're going to ch change the 0 to go to something else. It's an 8. That's bad news <laughs> for the Reds. It's going to go to Tony Perez's defense, but it's going to be an 8 now. It's probably going to be a base hit, I'm guessing. Without looking ahead of time, I believe it probably will be. Tony Perez, an 8, is going to be a single. So it sure is. So it's going to be a base hit. That blue die would have been a double play had it stayed a 0, but since it went to the 8, it's going to be a base hit for Rick Miller. And now that flips the order to, over to Daryl Evans. Now Fred Norman is loosening the Reds bullpen, just in case. In fact, I think he will come in to face Doyle and Yastrzemski. So last batter for Darcy, most likely. 107 for Darcy, and he gets a strikeout, so that helps him a little bit. But I don't think they're going to ch chance it any further than that. They're going to bring in Fred Norman, who I believe started Game 4, but he was also a reliever, so... Game four is a long way away, so no no worries there. So Darcy will be coming out, and they will go to the left-hander Fred Norman. Like I said, you don't want to use Eastwick, your closer, when you're down like this. So Fred Norman is going to be your batter against Denny Doyle with now one out and runners at first and second. Whoops. Norman. 482. That's over here against Doyle, lefty, using the splits. 482. It didn't matter. It's going to be a single plus to left field. And a single plus, I believe. Run on first goes to second, but the run on second will score. So Miller will stop at second, but scoring is Cecil Cooper to make it 7 to 2 Red Sox. On the base hit by Denny Doyle. So bringing in Norman didn't seem to help either as the run scores. And runners are at first and second. And that'll bring up Captain Carl. Red Sox having their way with the Reds in this ball game. Norman, 5-11. So that's a defensive check for the Reds. A 5-11 is going to go to the pitcher, Fred Norman. We don't need to do anything because his defense is right here on his card. 5-11 is a 1-6-3 double play, and that will end the inning. So... That certainly helped the Reds, but damage done. It is now 7-2 to two as we go to the ninth. And again, there's no save situation. But I think the Red Sox are going to bring in Dick Drago anyway. You know what? They're not going to bring in Drago. They're not going to waste Drago. They want to save him for game two. So there's no sense in wasting him. So they're going to actually bring in... They are actually going to bring in... A guy with a very interesting name, Dick Pohl. So Dick Pohl is on. And again, if he gets into any kind of trouble, they will not hesitate to go to Dick Drago. But right now, they figure with a 7-2 to lead, it's pretty safe to, to go with one of the lesser relievers, to put it kindly. All right, Concepcion will lead off. Here in the top of the ninth. Two, I'm sorry, 329. 329 goes to Concepcion, and that is a fly to right field, one away. So Concepcion is retired, and that's going to bring up the right fielder, Ken Griffey, followed by Geronimo. And then it'll pinch hit if they get that far, probably with Terry Crowley. He is now one out. 118. 118 for pole is a strikeout. So Ken Griffey is out of there. Two down. So Pohl with the strikeout brings up the last chance for the Reds. Cesar Geronimo. And Terry Crowley is on deck to pinch it if he gets a chance. Geronimo, 5 8 
you might get the chance. That's a rare play. So again, I can't. I don't have the rare play charts, so it's just going to call it a foul ball. 296 against the splits lefty. 296 is a deep drive to right field. His power rating is a three, but with the cold weather, it drops to a two. And then we roll these and add the two to it. Two and a two. That's bad. It's a four. So the deep drive at Fenway Park with a four. Actually, it's going to be okay for him. That's going to be a single. So he will keep the game going. Geronimo does single. So it won't be a one, two, three, ninth inning. It normally never is when I'm playing a game. There's usually something happening around there. So now that'll allow Terry Crowley to pinch hit for the Reds. They've used Dreesen, Rettman, and now Crowley, which I think are the three best pinch hitters. Armbrister doesn't need to bunt, so there's no sense having him in there. A so pole to Crowley. 362, and that's going to be Crowley. 362 is a 363 double play, but in this case, it's going to be a very easy play for Cooper. He'll step on the bag, and the ball game is over. Final score. Boston 7, Cincinnati 2. And the Red Sox dominate Game 1 of the World Series. This is not, by the way, a World Series replay. This was just a one-off to, to get the game in and see what you know, see how I like it and whatnot. Here at Fenway Park on Season Ticket Baseball. Season Ticket Baseball. Now that the game is over, I'll give you my thoughts. Just off the, I'm not going to pause the video and take time to do anything. I'm just going to reveal my thoughts. Um, as a newbie, I thought it played very well. I thought it played very easily. Uh, maybe I'm overconfident, but I think I got all the rules right. And what I had to look up, it was easy to look up the rules. They're very well put out as far as what you need to do. Um, so I thought the it helps a newbie uh, pretty quickly to learn the game. Uh, the game flow, I thought, went very, very well. The only downside, and that's my fault, was not having the rare play charts. I think that would have added even more to the game. But what are you going to do? But for the first time, I thought it was very entertaining. I don't know, you know necessarily how accurate the game is. I'd have to play the game over, over and over and over to see how accurate it is. Um, I am a big lefty-righty split guy. You know that. And the game did have that in, in play pretty well. Um, I like the nice size. One of the things I like about the cars is how big they are. It's easy for me to see. And as we get older, and our eyes don't get as good as we used to be. It's nice to have those large cards. They're colorful. I like, I like cards. They kind of remind me a little bit of inside pitch with the colors. So I really like that. Um, kind of wish payoff pitch would go to something more like this so that one little line in the middle it'd be nice if they had you know solid coloring like this to be more definitive but that's a different game uh, this one again i thought it flowed very well played it's it's fun i enjoyed it uh, if i had more time i'd set up another game play another game but right now i don't i have to get going but uh, that's just my first impression like i said for people that know the game very well um, if i made a mistake please let me know uh, you know, what inning it was in, what did I do, what didn't I do, did I not do something I should have done, did I do something I shouldn't have done. Not counting the rare plays because I didn't have the rare play chart that, for, in front of me, so that was just my bad on that. Probably should have printed that out before I came up here, but I didn't do it, and that's we're on the bridge now. So anyway, that's my first take on season ticket baseball. Like I said, a very fun game. I enjoyed it. I will play some more with these PDFs. And if I decide I really, 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 really like it, then I may uh, order a PDF. They don't have much in the way of printed sets available right now. 86 was available. I think it's sold out. I think there might be something in the 50s or something that, or 1960 or something like that that might be available. But they have quite a few in the PDF variety. Uh, PDFs are a little pricey, but not too bad considering you get the game parts and everything for free. So uh, I think, you know, that's not too bad. Uh, cutting things out. I printed these on 110 pounds cardstock that comes six to a page. So they may not be, you know, precisely sized. Each card may, may be slightly different than the other. I might have not have cut them exactly. Like you can see, Pete Rose and, and Johnny and Joe Morgan are not exactly cut to perfection, but they're good enough. 
Uh, they did suggest on the website, if you really wanted to be precise, there is perforated cardstock, and it's on their website. It's a link to it on their website on Amazon to get the perforated cardstock. And that's something I might think about doing if I play this game a lot, which you'll see. I've got a lot of games going on, so you know it's hard to it's hard kind of to dedicate to one game when you want to play all these different games. But it's something I may do. You never know. But overall, out of ten, I would give this game at least a solid eight. Uh, might have been better if I'd had the uh, rare play charts to go by, but certainly at least give it an 8 out of 10 um, for fun factor and everything else. So, um, again, let me know if you are, are well schooled in this game if I did something wrong. Uh, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed that presentation of Season Ticket Baseball, my first maiden voyage in that. And again, in this game, Boston Red Sox took it to the Reds 7 to 2. Till next time, enjoy playing whatever enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, however you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.